As I told you last week, Svelkit 1.0 is a big deal. That's fun, but how do you even start using Svelkit? I have the answer and I will tell you in under 3 minutes, so buckle up. Creating an app is easy. Svelkit has a little utility to generate a project. Just call npm create svelte at latest, select the skeleton project and you will be on your way. You will be prompted with a few questions about the tools you want to include in your project. These are useful modern tools that I think are worth accepting like Prettier and TypeScript. Once this is done, you just have to install dependencies and run the project with the dev command. Let's move on to actually writing code. Everything in Svelkit will resolve around layouts and pages. A layout is simply a Svelte component that will be active for a specific route. It works the same as in Remix and the Next.js app directory. This is where you would put things like a navbar or a sidebar. On the other hand, the page is the meat of the application. It will render as a child of the layout or in Svelte lingo as a slot. There are three sections to a page. The first is the script section. This is where you would write your JavaScript logic. The section under it is the actual rendering of the component. It will feel familiar to JSX, but it is actually Svelte templating logic. And finally, you have the style section. The neat thing is that all CSS is scoped to the current component, allowing you to write general selectors and even forgetting about BEM and other class naming conventions. Now that you know the basics, let's load data. To do this, Svelte will expose a load function. This will run a first time on the server and be rerun again when it reaches the user's browser. You could also decide to only run it on the server by creating a page.server.js file for your load function. This will be useful for calling APIs that require private keys. After showing data, you might want to create new data. This is where forms come in. In your page server file, you will define an action function. By submitting a form inside your page.svelte file, you will be sending data to this action function, and you can capture the values and save it to your database. Passing in the use enhance directive to the form will give you access to the status and result of the form submission, allowing you to build beautifully interactive forms. But this is just the beginning. With pages, load functions, and form actions, you already have the basics of a full stack application. If you want to learn more about Svelkit, I think you would gain a lot from subscribing to our channel, as we will be diving a lot more into it. Have a great day and see you in the next one.